Welcome back, uh, comrades, to Potato PC. What the fuck? Anyway, um, so I'm very sorry to actually know to you. Deputy, you sent in this replay a week ago, and I know, I know, it's not out yet, but now it's out. Caught the busiest time in uh, pretty much the whole month. <laughs> so that was not good. Anyway, happy to be back. So Ace is going to be his ally, playing as the OKW. Map is, of course, Road to Kharkov, the most annoying map in the universe. Uh, on the other side, we're going to have Kirov and Nogano. Move your MG. Okay, good. So Nagano's moving his MG, and it's going to be Brit plus Soviet. Hmm. Pretty good matchup. So, of course, the Sturm Pioneers are going to try to rush for the house. Uh, very, 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 very unluckily, it is going to be occupied by the infantry section just in time to avoid getting blasted away by the Sturm Pioneers from the house. Now, the Sturm Pioneers will be playing a little bit coy and getting behind the uh, little tree. Just to get in a little bit of extra cover, of course, the bushes over here preventing the fire from those infantry units. However, there's going to be the answer from Nogano. He's going to bring up the MG and the Sturm Pioneers beat a hasty retreat. To the point, they're going to be able to cap that VP quite well. On the right side, another MG, this time an MG42 from down PT, is going to be doing pretty much the same to these combat engineers and uh, force them away. So, of course, bowing a little bit of time for those Pioneers to cap to the point. We have a penal, of course from Kirov going for the Special Rifle Command and 2 Engineer start. I see this 2 Engineer start quite a lot with the Special Rifle Command, although i um, not really the biggest fan of it. I still prefer uh, to spend more of my manpower onto actual combat infantry, but the second Engineer is going to be definitely helpful in capping some points, and it's going to be even more helpful. This is Road to Kharkov, so there's a few roads around the map. There's a few nice um, choke points that you can use to lay down some mines and uh, just get a little bit of an explosion, the explosive trap on the enemy. Of course, more engineers equals more of that. That's great. On the south, we're going to see these uh, these poor riflemen from the Brits trying to build up some sandbags. Smart idea. Not very smart when you're under the fire of these Volksgrandiers. And so the Volksgrandiers are going to get a lot of free shots, getting two kills off on those infantry sections. So getting that half construction of sandbags, unfortunately costing the Brits something like 30, 60 manpower. So definitely not the best sandbag of all time. Looks like the Germans overall around the map are having a very good time. They've been able to push up, gather up some points, um, and then also get some good engagements under their belt. Although uh, they're going to get flanked by these combat engineers. It is, it is not much of a problem because, of course, these grenadiers behind are not going to be letting them uh, stay in the building. So they have to get out and... If they get out, they're going to die from the Pioneer Squad. Pioneer Squad even going for a flamethrower to help uh, bust these guys out of the building. Or rather, burn them out of the building. Very nice turnaround, the MG42. Actually, just managing to get a little bit of a burst off of the guy that was literally on the edge of the uh, Arc of Fire. Arc of Fire, which is now going to come in very, very, very handy. Of course, wide Arc of Fire of the MG42. Going to be able to catch even the engineers that were trying to flank. And then uh, with the flamethrower just upgraded on the pioneers, we're gonna have a nice little bit of burn coming in on those uh, penals. But the penals, uh, they're relatively safe with this uh, British MG covering them. So two MGs from Nogano are gonna be uh, quite enough to cover up a little bit of the uh, south side of the map and then quite a lot of the north as well. The problem is uh, they're covering two points that aren't really that vital, except of course the um, fuel, because. The Axis have been able to basically get every uh, square inch of the map that isn't covered by Allied MGs. Especially important, this cutoff point. Very nice coming in with the infantry. Lots of infantry coming in from the Axis uh, is going to be uh, very, very greatly advantaged at long range compared to the um, Allied troops right at this stage of the game. So they're going to be using that as much as possible, gather up some points, and prevent the Allies from going... Um, and going in and getting a resource advantage. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have a um, battle group headquarters from Ace quite near the center of the map. It's going to help uh, a lot in reinforcing the troops and getting them back onto the front lines as quickly as possible, back into the fight. And nicely, actually, using these, I think these were British built sandbags, uh, laying down a mine uh, in the heavy cover. That's, of course, very, very good just kind of trying to uh, lure them into the cover and then uh, 
once they get into there, well, they're gonna find a nasty surprise. And yeah, uh, as I said, mines always very very helpful. So yeah, it looks like the allies are trying to make a bit of a counteroffensive going, and they're gonna be successful in recapturing their um, cutoff point, which is of course quite important. And they also get a nice wipe off of the folk screen, not the folk screen, the stern pioneers. Folk screen here is also not in the best way, but they're trying to just lure in the allied. Um, the other units into the mine and they are successful at that, getting a nice suppression off and forcing them to retreat. Two kills on the penals and the engineers. Of course, uh, you cannot get any more than two kills on the mines. Uh, if this had been a few patches ago, then... Well, actually, yeah, it was two kills on the engineers and two kills on the penals. If this had been a couple of patches ago, those two squads might have been even wiped. Also almost wiped is this infantry section, which uh, was actually hit by the mortar. So Mortar already getting a kill and a, a few bits of damage off on the unit. Quite dangerous, uh, they need to find some way to counter that. Of course the counter is a Mortar of your own, and the Mortar of their own is of course the uh, Mortar emplacement from the Brits, which is very very dangerous. At the same time, uh, in the south there hasn't been much happening except at this point we have a nice offensive from these three Folks Grandiers. Gonna push away that Vickers machine gun. Um, right back where it came from, uh, also managing to basically force it out of the building with the incendiary grenades. And now that they're um, in a commanding position, they can get the buildings and they can get inside there, preventing the MG from uh, using its suppression. Almost going down to the folk grenadiers, but managing to escape just at the last possible second. In the north, we have a little bit of a retreat coming in from the Germans. Uh, this is going to save the um, save the cutoff point from being once again taken by the Germans. However, uh, that's still uh, pretty bad. Looks like the mine over here exploded. And considering this very, very low health machine gun that's moving and retreating away, might have been that. Anyway, um, yeah, overall the Germans still in a very commanding position. As you can see from the map, they have pretty much all of the uh, frontline points under their control. They ha only have the uh, middle VP that isn't firmly secured by some MG or... Um, some other form, for example these two folk strangers, and they do have a supply half track set up in a very very good position to, um, to get our forward retreat point and of course that's going to allow the folk strangers to stay in the fight a lot longer than the allied infantry is going to be able to. Uh, they're going to also have less of a time to walk back to front lines so that is of course very very strong. Then we also have three MGs I believe, no only two MGs but still. Um, the MGs are going to help in sort of securing the ground that the, uh, the Axis have been able to secure. The Allies, what do they have going for them? I feel like the Mortar Pit is really the only advantage that they have right now. So they have the advantage of indirect, indirect fire, at least over the center. Nice push coming in from the Penals actually in the right side. Kirov is going to have to retreat out of this building, but uh, because of, of course the uh, Flamer plus Mortar Fire. But overall, um, looks like the Allies are managing to get some hurt down on down PT putting some pressure on his forces. However, uh, this very, very nice combination of two Grenadiers plus the um, Flamethrower are going to be able to basically melt that machine gun before it can set up and fire on the German troops. So forcing it away and allowing the Axis forces with their long-range fire superiority to prevail against the Penals. However, there's an ace up the sleeve of the Allies, that is the 120mm mortar, which could be very, very dangerous in rooting out these Grenadiers from their defensive positions. So it remains to be seen if we can get some good shots off. That's really going to be the main thing. And as you can see, first round kind of misses. Uh, however, it is definitely scary enough for these uh, for these Grenadiers to run for the hills, uh, which is fine. Uh, right now, Nogano has selected the Tactical Support Regiment, so he is going to be able to designate a command vehicle. And he's going for an AEC, so I feel like his plan is to use the AEC as much as possible in this early to mid game, and then later on turn it into a command vehicle. Plus, of course, uh, the um, the tactical weapons, reg tactical support. Sorry, not special weapons. Tactical support regiment can get the air resupply operation, which gives like what an AT gun and an MG. I feel like always, yeah, pretty much always, and then it gives some med kits. So if you need some extra support weapons, <coughs> sorry, I had to cough. Uh, if, if you need some extra support weapons, you can definitely use this one. It is quite underrated of an ability. And I do enjoy whenever it is used. So overall, allies do have a chance of uh, capturing and holding the right side. Damn. 
Looks like Comrade Obvious is mad. <laughs> so the Phenols are going to be able to, along with this MG, ooh, nice incendiary grenade. Despite the incendiary grenade, the allied forces are going to be able to defend the cutoff. And at this point, the allies have a bit of a foothold on the right side as well, which is great. They have a nice demo charge hidden behind this building. So overall, uh, again, because of the fact that the Germans have this very, very um, forward battle group headquarters, they have a little bit of a better, um, better, better position to come back into the fight from. And they're going to be able to use this MG, get a little bit of suppression on the Allied infantry, and then come in with their own infantry to recapture the points that they lose. The only problems with these things are that the... Um, the mortars over here, the 3-inch mortar emplacement and the 150mm are going to be able to get some very nice shots off on the German units that are right now on the defensive. Also, the AEC provides a little bit of a light vehicle advantage to the Allies. As you can see, Ace has um, built a Schwer Panzer headquarters right near the, his own cutoff, which is of course a very, very great idea to defend it. And also, um, it's going to be great because he's at 100 fuel already, so the fuel advantage from the Germans definitely coming into their uh, favor. And they're going to be able to go for a Panzer IV or a Panther very soon. I would like a Panzer IV from Ace right now because the Panzer IV would be very good against not only the Allied Infantry but the AC as well, uh, whereas the Panther would only be useful against the AC, of course. Um, and of course the Panzer IV is a little bit more uh, affordable. Yeah, it looks like the Germans managing to recapture their um, their points that they kind of lost, their positions uh, from the Allies, but, you know, um, the Allies are still in the area. There's four penals coming in from Kirov. Kirov has gone for guard mortar coordination. At this point, if I was him, I would have gone for a guard's rifle infantry instead of a fourth penal. Um, I feel like the fourth penal isn't really going to be giving him anything that he doesn't like necessarily have right now, whereas the guards are going to be giving him some light AT capabilities that he's lacking. And uh, I feel like those are going to be coming in very, very helpful soon. Down PT has gone for the um, Super Armor Core, so he can also go for Panzer Fours or an Ostwind. And maybe an Ostwind might be a good idea, but with 166 fuel in his bank, I feel like he's going for the P4. Uh, yeah, he indeed is going for the P4, and then maybe Ace is going to go for a Panther. So. Those PTRSs might be coming in very, very helpful soon if they were available to Kirov. Kirov also does not have an AT gun, so he hasn't backtacked or side tech to the support weapons campaign yet. He is going straight for the tank of the battalion command, which um, is going to be okay. He's also got 126 fuel in the bank, so he might also go for um, a mechanized armor campaign. But the allies are just generally being squeezed into their base, and that's kind of, uh, kind of bad because. Not only they are in a bad position when it comes to resources, they also need to spend more resources on the sort of early to mid game units to try to um, try to get some territory back under their control, get a little bit of an advantage off right now, a temporary one. But if they do, um, then they're going to be in a worse position for the late game. For example, if uh, Nagan were to go for more infantry, he'd be more exposed to enemy vehicles because he wouldn't have an AT gun. Uh, but as a tent, he's not going for an AT gun either, so he's just kind of sitting on 500 manpower. So he's going to need to find some way to use that extra bit of resources to his advantage. Down PT has gotten his command pan, er, not command panzer 4, his normal camp panzer 4, and he's going to immediately upgrade that with the Pinto Mountain machine gun. Pretty good choice with the extra uh, munitions. So he's going to be able to come in with that panzer 4, and there's really not much that the eyes can do. We just had Nogano upgrade his AC to a command vehicle, and while that's of course, all fine and dandy to support infantry, and it's not going to be all that good when the Panzer IV comes in after it, because it, de it decreases the speed. So normally the AAC wouldn't be able to really one-on-one uh, -on -one take on the Panzer IV, but it would be able to at least run away and uh, get some pot shots off as it is as, as it is running away, kind of um, use hit and run tactics against it. But with the, of course, uh, command vehicle, not really going to be happening. Of course, the advantage of the command vehicle is that you can get this free air support, which is a recon. Uh, so, which is, of course, let's just turn on the fog of war right now for Nogano. It's basically just a map hack. It's just seeing everything. Although, uh, with the Schwer Panzer headquarters being there, not really going to be uh, the most useful uh, of abilities because, as you can see, it just gets shut down really quickly. And a second Panzer IV from Ace, I feel like, might just seal the fate of the AEC. If these two Panzer IVs come in and aggressively charge after the allied vehicles that are uh, in the center right now, they can take them down. 
Very nice purchase from Nagano, however, the AT gun is going to be helpful. Plus, the SU-76, also a very fortuitously uh, this decisive purchase from Kirov. Because if there had been a Panther, then the Su-76 might have not been that useful. But with two Panzer IVs on the field, Su-76 is a great little unit. Meantime, in the south, we have um, the Mortar has been barraging the area, but not really much else. We have a couple of these Volkswagen still in their defensive positions around the houses. And um, yeah, pretty much nothing happening. So basically, most of the action is going to be happening on the right side right now. Panzer IV medium tank. Kind of getting stomped on by the SU-76, but the German infantry is doing it basically the same to the Allied infantry, and that's not going to be uh, going all that well for the Penals. Penals are going to get a little bit of fire support coming in from the SU-76 with the artillery barrage, but not really going to be enough. And indeed, that was a AT gun shot. So pack 40 plus uh, the Rakettenwerfer from Ace, and uh, yeah, they're basically going to be nice little bits of support for the Panzer IV and uh, the other Panzer IV against the AC and against the, of course, Su-76. Uh, another point in favor of the Germans right now is the fact that we finally have a support gun coming in from Ace. So he's going to be able to use that support gun finally to get some counters to this mortar emplacement, which has been kind of ravaging his units and uh, preventing them from getting some good defensive positions going, which, uh, of course, of course, going to help. Uh, gonna help him hold the south, and it's gonna help him also push against the uh, French border emplacement because if it goes down, uh, then this whole area is gonna be a little bit more exposed than it would normally be. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Also gonna be useful in countering the AT gun, so very very good purchase from Ace. And yeah, in fact, I feel like yeah, that was the end of the MG. I wonder what killed it though. So overall, a little bit of air support coming in from the Allies. So we have the Mark vehicle on the P4. P4 is going to be uh, yeah, immediately retreated. Good call there from down PT. He didn't want to stay there uh, against the Su-76 and an AT gun, the 6-pounder, uh, with an the Mark vehicle on his head. And yeah, overall just going to be conserving his Panzer IV for a later push. Second Panzer IV, however, coming in and going to try to take down, I feel like, the mortar emplacement and doing some damage against the engineers. However, it is very close to this AC. The AC is trying to fire through the trees, I think. Uh, no, it isn't. Anyway, um, so the AT gun is going to get pushed up to try to get some side shots. However, as you can see, the trees are a little bit in the way, and so the AT gun has to... Uh, oh, actually, the AT gun is moving up to fire the other Panzer IV. The other Panzer IV still has the marked vehicle on him. So he takes a lot of damage, very close to going down. Look at that, that is so damn close. But luckily for down PT, he's going to be able to save his tank. And at this point, we have a desperate push coming in from the Allies. The VPs are very, very, very much in favor of the Axis. With these triple caps that the Axis have been able to establish, the Allies are in a very bad way. Only 52 VPs left, and they're trying their that last desperate moves to capture some points. Of course, on the right side, uh, thanks to the support of the Su-76, it looks like this MG, uh, or actually Vickers, that was kind of stolen, kind of commandeered by the Soviets, is going to be able to capture the uh, right side VP. But it might not be enough, because if the Axis grab the center, then they're still going to be able to win the game off of that. Also, the folks in years from Ace have been able to flank the MG positions from uh, Kirov. So he's going to be able to get to, into the rear, into the mortars, and also uh, getting behind the Su-76, getting some Panzer Faust. There goes the Panzer IV. However, uh, it's not enough because the Su-76 is going to be forced away by the Axis infantry, and then more Axis infantry is going to be able to come in and capture the points. Uh, this MG should definitely be used and capture the VP. However, yeah, it looks like overall, while it looks like one of the Panzer IVs went down, it's not going to be enough to stop the German tide of uh, Grenadiers from capturing the points. So overall, very much an early game beatdown coming in from the Axis. Uh, using their early game advantage when it comes to the long range engagements and plus some very very good MG usage uh, coming through. While the Allies did try to later remedy this with the mortar and then uh, their light vehicles. It really wasn't enough because then the Germans, by then, by that time, they had a very, very heavy fuel advantage, partially thanks to the fact that they were able to get um, uh, some good cutoffs off of the Allies. And because of that extra fuel advantage they had, and of course also they had a fuel advantage because they had more strategic points, and because of that they were just able to get in those Panther Fours once again, uh, rather, you know, pretty much the first time in a long, long time I've seen uh, 
a couple of Panzer IVs being decisively brought out and used aggressively. So overall, definitely contributing to the victory there. Um, both the good usage of the MGs and the Panzer IVs, I feel like the decisive factors. Plus, of course, the um, the cutoff plate, but that's something that you kind of always want to do. And yeah, pretty much that's going to be the end of the match. So I want to thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Well, actually, what could the Allies have done to win? Well, I mean, I feel like this is mostly about just losing early game engagements a little bit too hard. And yeah, perhaps Kirov could have gone for something um, a little bit different with his build. Maybe the 120mm mortar wasn't really all that useful right at the start. And definitely going for four penals mm, is not something that I like, but considering the situation he was in, I can fully understand both of the decisions. So it's not like I can count them as mistakes in any way. I feel like they were good choices considering the situation at the time. Um, Nogano perhaps could have gone for some more um, riflemen, for some more, of course, infantry sections. Only two really didn't cut it. Um, and especially, I mean, going for special weapons, I feel like, would have been better than tactical support because the um, them free half track with the weapons would have been very useful, I feel like, in this match. Not only to provide support to the infantry, getting some uh, reinforcements off would have been more useful than the AC, in my opinion, as a light vehicle. And plus, of course, uh, that would have basically... Uh, meant that he didn't need to go for the weapon racks, so he could have saved up a little bit more fuel in that regard as well. Uh, but yeah, the mortar pit was good. Everything else was pretty good, of course. Um, I feel like a mistake that the Allies did make was not going for any minesweepers at any point. But yeah, uh, the Axis didn't go for any minesweepers either. In the end, the mines didn't really play too much of a role. And yeah, it all, it all just kind of came down to the fact that the Alexis were able to push in very aggressively at the early stages of the game. And then with that, uh, research advantage coming with the Panzer fours. So one lack of AT, two um, maybe Doctrine choices are the only things that the Allies, I feel like, really did wrong strategically. Tactically, of course, you know, um, I guess you could say... Letting that building fall um, from Nagano was a little bit of a mistake because he had that MG like in very very alone, like it was basically isolated over here. So perhaps supporting that MG over here with some more infantry might have been a little more useful. And perhaps I don't know, perhaps going for a clown car might have been a good idea for Kyos. But that's basically about it. So I want to thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Drop down a like if you did. Drop down a dislike if you didn't. As always, and I'll see you soon.